chocolate versus coffee. What I want to do today is actually give you what's healthier overall for your diet, not just for the brain, but the body as well. Welcome back, everybody. We're here. Brand new Cabral Concept, episode 2783. Today's topic is what is healthier, chocolate versus coffee. Now, this is really interesting because we've been doing so much work and so many shows on the brain. Today is not about the brain, but both of these have been shown to be highly beneficial for producing brain-derived neurotropic factor. Basically, the uh, proteins, the molecules that you need inside of the brain to keep you young, not just in body, but in mind as well. But when people like to look at foods, they like to put them against each other in terms of competition. Someone asked me the other day, again, all these podcasts, all these shows, these episodes are always community driven. So if you have a question, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Uh, I love being able to turn these into topics. But someone asked me, you know, it's okay. We've got all these top foods to produce more brain-derived neurotropic factor. Which one's better? Is it coffee or is it chocolate? To which I always answer, why can't you do both? But they said, okay, if you can only do one. I said, yeah, it's interesting. Why don't I do this? I'm going to look up the specific research, and I gave you actually what was the most powerful for brain-derived neurotropic factor. I'll link up that show if you'd like. But what I want to do today is actually give you what's healthier overall for your diet, not just for the brain, but the body as well. So I looked at this um, from a few different frameworks. One is, what does the research say in terms of what is it good for, right? Like what's chocolate good for? What's coffee good for? Then I looked at it in terms of um, its nutrient profile, and then I looked at it in terms of its antioxidants, all right? So that's what I wanna share with you here today. Hopefully it'll be a fun show. I'd love to be able to break these things down. And by the end of the show, you'll certainly know, you know which one might be better for you because I think there is a best depending on the individual. So the, the biggest thing is this, we wanna understand is that when we look at coffee consumption, there's actually a ton of research behind it in terms of uh, reducing Alzheimer's disease, reducing dementia, reducing type 2 diabetes, reducing cardiovascular disease, and reducing high blood pressure. Okay, so I just named four of the five leading causes of mortality. Four of the five. The only one I didn't name was cancer. And that's because it's really tough to tie, you know, a specific food to that. We know we have that with brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Coffee may be part of that. It may not. So I actually don't want to um, put that in here today. So how does coffee work? Well, Coffee has very powerful antioxidants called flavonoids. We'll be getting to those in, some, in a moment. It also contains something called chlorogenic acids. Again, we'll, we'll talk about those in, in just a bit. Uh, but it has a nutritional profile that's very interesting. So that's what I want to move into next. But before we do, I want to share with you that chocolate in its own right has been shown to be good for cardiovascular-based disease, may improve brain function, neurovascular or um, neurological function. And it is actually, which is interesting because there's actually calories in it, has been shown to help with blood sugar regulation as well. So does it have the same research as coffee? Not the same, but it's getting there. Now, one of the reasons why uh, chocolate does not have the same research as coffee is that there are far more variations in chocolate. So there are milk chocolates that contain anywhere from like 10% to 50% of chocolate. And then the rest of it is milk solids. Maybe I'll do that for a Friday review of actually what's in chocolate. I just, I just did a, a fun one last week, but just I'll give you a quick uh, recap of what might be contained in that milk chocolate. So milk powder, typically some type of sugar or cane sugar, some vanilla extract or other items like that. So let's just say it's like a 50-50 milk chocolate. Okay, 50% is essentially milk and sugar. And then 50% is cacao, chocolate liqueur, et cetera. Okay, so cacao butter, chocolate liqueur, your chocolates, and then you've got 50% milk and sugar. Okay, and when we look now at a 70% bar or a 90% bar, what do we have? Well, we might still have the milk, right? And maybe not, but like we could still have that. But at least now we have 70% coming from chocolate, right? That's the difference. So instead of 50% milk and sugar, well, it's 70% chocolate and then 30% milk and sugar. Now, there are obviously 
healthier variations where there's no milk and now we start to move into just dark chocolates, okay? The dark chocolates typically aren't gonna have milk, but some people do add oat milk or other things like that. But honestly, it's usually just sugar, maybe a vanilla extract or some type of flavor, vanilla bean, and then it's 70, 80, 90% dark. And those are where you're gonna get much more of your benefits. So what the studies really need to do is to say we wanna look at dark chocolate Maybe 70%, which a lot of people like. Once you start to get to 80, 82, 85, it just becomes more bitter. And the reason it becomes more bitter, hopefully this is becoming actually more clear, is that it's just essentially more pure chocolate. Pure chocolate from cacao beans is bitter. The only way that you make it less bitter is you dilute it with sugar and milk and or milk right? So the less sugar you have, because you have more chocolate, the more bitter it is. So it's at least something to take into consideration. And the higher the chocolate, the more powerful uh, your results will be. Okay, so let's now take a little bit look at the nutrition-based profile, which I think is important to look at too, because whenever you're looking at a uh, two different foods, you can look at it as, well, a drinking hot chocolate if you want, versus a coffee. And you can make them both a liquid if you want to look at it as kind of a one-to-one. -one. So I'm going to take you through it. Okay. So for every, um, we're doing it on a low end, 1.4 grams. Like if we look at um, saturated fat. So we'll look at one cup, let's say, of, of drinking chocolate versus one cup of coffee. <clears throat> All right. So not much saturated fat in the chocolate, but there'll be a couple grams, two, maybe three grams, depending on how many squares you put in. Very little, if any, fat at all, saturated fat in coffee. Okay, so almost no fat. There's almost no calories at all. Calcium, chocolate has the edge. 114 milligrams of calcium, two milligrams in coffee. Phosphorus, right, great for the bones. 105 milligrams in chocolate, three milligrams in coffee. Zinc, 0.63 milligrams in uh, chocolate, 0 0.02 milligrams of zinc in coffee, very small either way. 23 milligrams of magnesium in chocolate, three milligrams in coffee. Small amount, both directions, but coffee, but chocolate, actually the magnesium adds up the more you eat, of course. You eat a half a bar of chocolate, you're getting a good 100 plus milligrams of magnesium. That's why sometimes your body craves chocolate, not for the chocolate, but actually for the magnesium. Uh, 15 milligrams of choline versus 2.6. 197 milligrams of potassium, that's a decent number in chocolate, 249 milligrams in coffee. How much sugar in your typical, uh, let's say 70% dark, 9.6 grams, so 10 grams of sugar versus zero in coffee, unless you, of course you add the sugar. Uh, one gram of fiber in chocolate, zero in coffee. Vitamin D, about 45 IUs in chocolate, zero in coffee. Now this is just one rendering, but it's pretty close. So when you look at this, you can see that Coffee is essentially 99% devoid of mineral or vitamin-based nutrition, where hot chocolate or chocolate actually has three grams or so of protein, two, three grams of fat, nine, 10 grams of carbs coming typically from the sugar or the bean itself. <clears throat> it's got a little water and then it's got nutrients in it. So if we're giving an edge... It depends on how you want to look at this. Are you someone that's trying to watch your calories and watch your fat and sugar intake? I'm a little bit leery of chocolate as a healthy food when it contains a fair amount of sugar. And the reason is, whenever you combine fats and sugar at the same meal, in an easy to digest meal, it can be detrimental for weight gain. So you just want to be careful with that. You want to be careful. Now, no big deal if you're having two, three squares of chocolate, you know, after a meal, especially if it's 70 plus percent, but it's when you're eating half a bar or more, which could contain 15 plus grams of fat, another 20 plus grams of sugar, um, that that can be a, a real issue in terms of, in my opinion, but I've seen this obviously play out in practice in terms of overall health, um, potentially weight gain, diabetes, etc. You're not going to get that with coffee unless you add, of course, milk and sugar. So it depends on how you're taking your coffee. So they can be totally equal if you're adding milk and sugar. 
right? Without a doubt, because you're getting the calcium, you're getting all these different things with it. So that's more of a pick em. I would say if you're actually looking for the nutrition from it, then you're going to get more nutrition from chocolate, okay? In terms of micronutrients. So what I like to do, and I talked about it on last Friday's podcast, is actually get 100% dark chocolate. Now it's bitter, but you don't need a lot, and it's powerful in terms of its antioxidants. Now you're not getting the sugar, getting a little bit of the fat, but what you're getting is all of the micronutrients as well. So a nice way to do it. Or you can even add it to your coffee. We can talk about that at the end. Now, the last part is on antioxidants. All right. Antioxidants, there's a lot of debate. A lot of debate on which one is superior. When I look at the ORAC value and I look across, um, you know, essentially when we're looking at how uh, ORAC value essentially distributes and uh, looks at antioxidant capacity for a food. Typically, this is how it looks when it's looking at food based. It's looking at blueberries as one of the most powerful foods that you can eat, like on a literally a daily basis. Okay. Cranberries is up there. Your strawberries are up there. Um, your kale and dark leafy greens are up there in terms of antioxidants. I have a whole show on antioxidants. I can link that up here today as well. I'll give you the show notes in just a moment. But when you start to look at other foods or food substances, when you look at a 70% dark chocolate, it is almost on par with wild blueberries that are typically at the top, along with like pomegranates and other things that are maybe a little bit more obscure. So at the top, are actually a lot of drinkable foods that you could add in. Now, it, this may surprise you, but roasted coffee beans are at the top of the list. The roasted coffee beans actually allow for many of those antioxidants to become liberated. Now, I did give you before the whole coffee fruit extract, and I'll link up that show as well, is the best for improving brain cognitive ability and staving off Alzheimer's. But roasted coffee beans, which are a little bit different than the whole coffee fruit extract, have more than double the amount of antioxidants as wild blueberries or 70% dark chocolate. Now, the debate is this. Green tea has about 10% of the antioxidants of coffee. Now it's still very high, it's just coffee's off the chart. The difference is matcha tea is said to be on the same level as coffee, if not greater. And here's the reason why. You're not using the loose leaf and filtering it through water. With matcha, you're actually grinding up the tea leaves and consuming them as a powder. Pretty remarkable, right? Well, it gets even better. There's one more part to it. If you were to take the cacao beans, the raw beans, the cacao powder, and grind them down, the cacao beans to a powder, they may actually be higher than almost any of them, right up there with matcha and roasted coffee beans. They may even be above. That is, there's, there's back and forth in that. I think it's like a little bit of conflict of interest. This study shows coffee beans are the highest in antioxidants, this study shows clearly that uh, chocolate is not as high as coffee beans. However, when you get raw, crushed, powdered cacao beans, which is very bitter, but you can absolutely put it in your smoothie or your cup of coffee, now you have a very rich antioxidant beverage. So the debate may continue to go on, but what I can share with you is this. There is no doubt that the science is clearly proven it doesn't have to be caffeinated. You can have decaf coffee. Just make sure it's Swiss water processed or there's a new CO2 extraction as well. When you use a healthy coffee, it can be to your benefit in terms of a very powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, great for overall aging and longevity. On that same token, I would say is if you're up for it, you can make yourself a super powerful, uh, super antioxidant coffee by simply adding in some raw cacao powder to your coffee. Now it's good, may make it a little bit more bitter depending on how you like your coffee. You could blend that up. You could add a little bit of nut milk if you wanted to it and actually make more like a mocha. This would give you a very rich, powerful antioxidant drink that you truly may enjoy. Again, it can be decaffeinated or it can be caffeinated. I wouldn't go overboard in terms of uh, caffeine, but 
200 milligrams or so per day is, is pretty uh, standard and, and acceptable for the average individual. Just make sure that's before 1 p.m. And, uh, and then you don't have to have the debates. So I'll let you decide what is healthier, chocolate or coffee. I would love to let you leave your comment below. Tell me why, based on current research with all the different benefits of coffee or the research on the nutritional-based profile of coffee versus chocolate, how you would use it, uh, and then the antioxidant-based capacity. Let me know below whether you would even consume 100% chocolate coffee or chocolate in the first place, and then maybe even test it out in your coffee as well. All right, I've got lots of shows for you to link up to and listen to today. Head on over to stephencabral.com slash two seven eight three and i will link up the previous shows on the number one nutrient for boosting brain power as well as the additional shows that i spoke about on today's take care everybody i'll be back tomorrow uh talking about new legal testosterone boosting supplements and if they may be right for you Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.